everybody. Welcome to Heretic Happy Hour. I am your host, Sparkly Heretic. <laughs> Typically, the people that frequent this establishment are part of the human design community, and our topics of discussion are through a human design lens. And I, of course, being a 5-1 profile, use this space and these conversations to investigate and add my two cents of heresy. <laughs> Uh, because I got such excellent feedback, today we're doing something a little bit different. And today we're going to play on a different playground, and I'm really excited about it. Please welcome our guest, Veronica Drake. She goes by V. Hi, Veronica. Hi. How are you? Oh, I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> I know. We're very, very excited to have you. I got, I probably got 75 email <laughs> questions for you. So, very excited. Veronica is a psychic medium. Also, are you, you're a medical intuitive as well, aren't you? I, I do medical intuitive work. I don't necessarily call myself a medical intuitive, but when I'm scanning the body, things pop out. I see things. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, Veronica is the real deal, but there's more to her than just channeling the dead and talking to spirit. V is a trained spiritual messenger, a life coach, a uh, metaphysical spiritual counselor as well. Um, she's also an entrepreneur who runs several programs that empower women, which is really cool. She actually walks women through the process of introducing them to their own inner guidance to jumpstart their personal journey, revealing their purpose. I know I got a lot out of the couple sessions that I have with you, and that's kind of the short version. Is there anything that you'd like to add to that? about some of your programs and what you do? You know, I, I just, I feel so blessed to do what I do. I, I almost feel like it's, you know, use the term playground, you know, every day I feel like I'm on the playground. I get to come into this space where people open their hearts and their lives to me. And, you know, spirit just gives me all of this great stuff to help people improve the quality of their lives. And I feel honored to be that conduit. So thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Well, first of all, what are you drinking? Because we have to say what we're drinking at it's happy hour time. I am. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this or not, but I'm a coffee whore. Oh, <laughs> so. I'm an iced tea whore. <laughs> and, and I also have my, my sugar-free lemonade and water over here. So I've got a lot going on over here. Okay, nice. I've got iced tea with squeezed or orange, fresh navel orange in it. Yeah. It's delish. It is. It's really good. So can you explain more to us about your psychic abilities? I, I, one thing I want to say is I actually watched you um, channel Stephen Paddock. Is that his name? Yes. The man who was responsible for the 2017 Vegas shooting. Yeah. And you, your whole body changed your face changed I was watching and I was actually really freaked out I thought god she's so brave what what did that feel like I, you know, I've always wanted to ask you that and what did that feel like it was surreal because typically I am not the kind of channeler that 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 energies enter into or I take on other forms or shapes but when I had channeled him let me preface this by saying it was shortly after the incident. Like, I don't think there was any much time, you know, and people say, well, did he cross over? Did he, I, I don't know that, but it, I don't know that that had anything to do with it. But when I had opened up to this, I was new, new ish to this show that I channeled it for. And I, I really didn't know what I was in for in the terms of, well, I've always done this. I've, you know, talked, many people have talked through me, but it was as if I felt disconnected from my body when that happened. And my husband was actually in the room when I was doing it. He was standing on the other side of my laptop and he just kept looking at me and I was aware that he was there. But when I got done, he said to me, you weren't there because you were, you were not in your body. And to this day, I have not watched that. I don't want to watch it. And yeah, yeah. Never again have I allowed anyone to come into my body. I've learned 
how important it is to ground and protect and, you know, do due diligence so that I can remain whole and intact. And, but, but I will say I've heard amazing feedback that it was a great interview. So. Yeah, it was, it was intense. It was yeah. really, really intense. <laughs> Gosh. That's what I heard. <laughs> well, so tell us more about your, your abilities. Mm -hmm. So I have, in, now this is only in hindsight because growing up, um, I guess, you know, I don't, I, first of all, let me say, I believe we all have it there. No one got skipped. No one went, okay, you have it. Now we'll skip over you. Every single human being has this potential. It's like playing the piano. If you take piano lessons and I don't, I can still sit down and bang on the keys you're going to be much more proficient at it than I am. So it's about training. It's about development. Now, when I was a little girl, I can remember feeling things. Like I would be watching the TV. I would lay on the floor, you know, your hands in your face. And I would feel like something was behind me. My grandmother had this old house and we were never allowed upstairs because my grandfather was an antique dealer. And so imagine antiques, old energies, all of the stuff that comes with that. And so I would always feel something and I couldn't explain why, but I was afraid to be alone in the room. Hmm. And so the room, I would get cold in there on a hot summer night, like all of these things, you know, and of course, who did you tell in the seventies when I was a kid, like who, who, what am I going to say? And then I remember being out in the yard. My grandmother had this huge yard and I can remember being all the way up. She had a chicken coop at the top of the yard. So my brother and I loved to go see the chickens, right? Well, coming back down the yard, the attic window, I, could, I looked up and clear as day, there was something or someone standing in the attic window, the place where we weren't allowed to go up in that I always felt the weird vibes from. So I saw that. Never did I do anything with that or even remember that quite frankly. Fast forward, um, I grow up with kind of using it, well, am I going to pass this test? If I'm going to pass this test, let 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 me hear a horn honk or, you know, playing the, the games with it like that, not knowing what it was called. So in 1987, I was 24 years old, pregnant with my second son, and my beloved grandfather passed away very like suddenly he was sitting in the room with my brother eating a bowl of ice cream put the bowl down put his head back and just passed now he had a heart condition and it was inevitable but he passed i was devastated i mean sobbing this man was everything to me right just sobbing uncontrollably i'm six months pregnant i couldn't sleep and at at the foot of my couch i saw him he physically appeared to me he had, he looked like he was in his twenties. He was 67 when he passed. He had, he had his army uniform on, which I had never seen him in his army uniform. After that, I of course saw a picture and I'm like, oh my God, that's what I saw. And he said to me, I'm okay. <laughs> and you need to take care of that little boy inside of you. Now in 1987, we didn't get ultrasound. Like you didn't know you were having a little boy. Well, sure enough, a couple months later, I gave birth to a, a healthy little boy. So that was my first, and I get the chills every time I tell this story. So that was my first introduction to it. Okay. Yeah. And when, was there a particular um, event or something that happened that actually changed your life or then you really started doing this for, you know, for, for a living? So my husband, another story, um, my, my, I'm trying to think which comes first, uh, so in 1996, I, prior to who I am now, to who you see today, I was a pretty shitty person, full disclosure. Mm -hmm. I was, I was not very, I didn't love myself. And so as a result, I made some pretty shitty choices. I'd hurt people with my words. Um, I grew up in a house where, you know, it was alcoholism and mental illness and, and I was about survival. And so I made some pretty shitty choices. And in 1996, November of 96, I went to kill myself. I had decided I didn't want to live anymore. I had made some really poor, to poor choices that I could see no way back from. And, um, I was careening my car, I was going to crash into the side of a bridge and I had my foot on the accelerator 
November 96. And it was the year we had a, a tremendous snowstorm here. So we must have had five feet of snow on the ground, careening my car. And I was screaming the F word at whatever power you want to call it, just asking, get me out of here, get me. And all of a sudden I felt my car fill up with this warmth. And so much so that I had to like put my shoulders together to feel like I could fit in the car. Wow. There was so much energy in there. And I felt my pant leg be pulled off the accelerator. And I heard, we've got you. We have work for you. And I still, I get chills to this day. Yeah. And, and I just was like, shit. <laughs> you know, like, what was that? And right. And that began my journey in 1996. That was okay. the real, when I really started taking it. So from 1987 to 1996, I was a mother, you know, and then I kind of went off the path and I made some bad choices. And you know, so it was like kind of my initiation because I do believe we all have dark nights of the soul. And, mm -hmm. and sometimes those dark nights of the soul are the entryway or the portal into what people know as light workers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm the person that shares the light. I do believe that's what I went through. So, yeah. yeah. That, well, what's interesting, a little tidbit for the people watching, you had uh, told me when I met with you, and I don't even know if you would remember this. I know you talked to so many people, but, you know, I went through a, a pretty horrendous spinal fusion um, surgery with there was a lot of emotional trauma attached to it. Just a big, for the people, the human design people that are watching, it was a definite heretic being burned at the stake type of thing with where my reputation was being ruined. It was just a, you know, and, and there's nothing you could do about it. You can't fix it. It's, you can't. And I had this surgery and I had dark night of the soul for about six months. <laughs> Every night when the dark would come, I would start to feel anxious. And I knew that that's when the pain was going to come. And it wasn't in my back. It was the pain, nerve pain in my feet. And the only way I can explain it is, you know, when you get a really bad cramp, like your feet cramp up and that feeling right before you get that. And I would have that about nine hours every night and I didn't have any medication strong enough for it. And I would lay on my living room floor with my body wrapped around this ottoman and I would hysterically cry. I felt like I was having an exorcism mm -hmm. every night. That's the thing. I'm like, what the fuck? It, and you said to me, that was your initiation into the next into I think human design and that's when a lot of things started changing for me it was right around my seventh year cycle with human design and I started to see just kind of changes in the way that I felt about myself and started to not take these things so personally and so that's interesting you talking about an initiation because you were the one that told me that was mine. And I, I kind of thought it was, but I never really, yeah, I knew it was something. I <laughs> you know, people, people, humans need a label for everything. Right. So I, you know, some people will say they talk about an ascension. They talk about an enlightenment. They talk about dark night of the soul. I feel like they can all be synonymous, right? Because an ascension is is basically a rising up. And where do you rise up from when you're down? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Well, are we ready? Because I've got a lot of questions for you. We are ready. Um, yes. And I just want to say, so I've received a lot of questions. If for some reason your question doesn't get answered, V, you and I talked about this, right? That there's messages here for everybody, just in case somebody's question. I do this so frequently. I host groups. And what I love about the group energy, if you've put a question forward, you're in our sphere. You're in our energy. That means the guides, myself. And, and honestly, I don't even really need a full name. You can just give me a first name. I don't, I need very little detail. 
Okay. So, um, but, but because you've put a question and because you're watching this show, even I'll go as far as to say, cause I have a YouTube channel where I direct people to get messages, even if they're not specifically for them, you will hear exactly what you need to hear. You may have something weighing on your mind, something heavy, and, and I'll be reading or she'll be reading a question and I'll be answering it for someone else. And you'll be like, ah, there it is. And that's because spirit knows what you need to hear. And you're okay. Gonna... So. Okay. All right. Perfect. All right. Let's start with, um, let's see here. And of course, I printed everything off except her name. Okay. Um, well, we have a lovely woman here from Tucson, Arizona, and she has a question. Um, what is my specific area of focus for a new online business that gives me a good income, flexibility, and freedom? Mm -hmm. So while most people would say, oh, that's kind of vague, right? When yeah. I do these readings, the first thing I do is I can pick up on her energy. And the first thing that comes through to me is she is a teacher at heart. So no matter what she takes to, whatever lights her up, whatever she's passionate about, whatever she, and here's the key, whatever she has struggled with and mastered in the past has a lot of potential for her future is the direction. okay so think about what you've gotten wrapped up in what you've gotten lost in what you've struggled with these are all little breadcrumbs that the soul leaves for us to find it okay thank you okay here is we've got one from joanne v from downtown pennsylvania oh i'm um, in pennsylvania yeah why am I not having success offering breath work sessions? What am I supposed to be offering? Mm -hmm. So there's life in the breath is what I hear from spirit. So that does mean there's it's a viable business model, if you'd like. It's just not what I'm hearing hardy enough. It's not... Um, there's not enough substance to it. So you want to look at the breath work because breath is, it's everything right without breath, but you want to take it into a step-by-step -step process, not just teaching the breath, but understanding what the benefits and the values are. And then maybe you teach a little bit how it's useful in the modern day world. In other words, I'm hearing Joanne, people aren't understanding its importance. And so your job as part of the breath worker is to stress and emphasize the importance of it. You're missing. It's like when I look at the business aspect of it, it's fragmented. There's pieces missing, pieces missing. And they're all there. They're like jigsaw pieces. You just, they're all there. The pieces are there. You just have to figure out where they fit. Okay. <laughs> all right. Here is a question from Alana H in Prescott, Arizona. Uh, I have several ghosts in my house. <laughs> we just sort of live with them. It, should I be worried? Is there something I should be doing? So Hollywood has made a spectacle, if you will, of ghosts, poltergeist, all you know, all that kind of stuff. Now, I am not the expert on this by any means. I do know that everything is energy. I do know that energy walks the earth. I have, I could use the term ghosts in my house. I have energies that walk my hallways. I can hear their footsteps. 99.99999% of the time, they're benevolent. They're benevolent. Okay. They, they Typically, they come with the land or you've moved into their territory. And a lot of times what I found when I do readings about with people with this is the ghosts are, are there with an offering preventative help. I'll give you a quick example. There was a, a client of mine that she bought uh, an older house and she had the inspection and everything looked great. She was a single woman, lived alone. 
And she kept hearing this noise in the basement. And she kept hearing that it was almost like something hitting a pipe, hitting a pipe, hitting a pipe. And she couldn't figure it out. And she would go down in the basement and it would stop when she would go down there. So she investigated to the best of her ability and it kept happening and it kept happening. Well, what ended up happening was the the entity, the ghost, the energy was trying to get her attention to the hot water heater that ultimately ended up bursting and flooding her basement. Wow. Okay. Because when you, she, cause we talked, right. And I said to her, you know, he, I knew it. I knew it. I didn't know the hot water heater had bursted, but I knew what it would want, what it wanted. And I said, go downstairs, hit that pipe and just see what it sounds like. Is that your noise? And she said, absolutely. And I was on the phone with her and she said, absolutely. That's it. I said, well, that, that it was trying to get your attention. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here is a question from Denise R in Spokane Valley, Washington. This is kind of cool. What does my aura look like? Ah, love that. So if you think about an aura, think about putting your arms out and to the length of all the way around you, that's how far your how far your aura radiates out. Now, you've got several layers of your aura. You know, when you ever say to somebody, "Oh, you're in my space." That's exactly what you mean. Or if you've ever felt somebody like up on you and you're, they're, in, they're in your aura, what it looks like at any given time can be different because we have layers and these layers have colors around it, right? So depending on what's going on in your life, you might have an emphasis on a certain color. And what I understand the auras to mean when I see a really vibrant blue or a vibrant yellow, I associate it with the chakra centers. Okay. So, and then that a lot of times when I read auras, that's what I do. I see like right now I can see a yellow aura around you. And I can see that, you know, when I trace that, I'm drawn right to your solar plexus, to the center of self-esteem, self-worth. What are you struggling? With? And that would open up our sessions to dig in there. That's how I use auras. Okay. I don't know what hers looks like right now because yeah. I, not in my space, but yeah. Okay. Okay. Alessandro A from the Canary Islands in Spain. Wow. Ooh, nice. This one I read and I just chuckled <laughs> because it, it, I just did. He says, here's my question for Veronica. It is about my relationship with Carla. We have been together a month. It's very intense and rich also up and down and extremes. <laughs> what is the nature of this meeting and how do I get the best benefit for both? Hmm. Good question. Uh, so the first thing that comes up to me is spirits showing you a reflection of yourself. So there's some version of you within Carla and vice versa. People come together so that they can learn. It doesn't mean there's a longevity that's around it. I don't know that specifically, but honestly, you, the two of you are each other's teacher. That's the role that I would look at this relationship as, as having. The other okay. thing is you have to be very careful because you and Carla, while there might be a lot of passion around this, passion can quickly turn into anger. So you must be very careful with that relationship. Okay. Well, and it made me wonder from a human design perspective is the first thing that popped into my mind is, oh, this is maybe a guy that doesn't have um, defined solar plexus, which are the emotional center, but his girlfriend does. And that can feel up and down and crazy to somebody who doesn't have it, but the person that doesn't have it can amplify it and reflect it back. Yep. So it just I, makes everything, I, I mean... I yeah. love design for that. I love that. I love yeah. that. Yeah. So that's kind of why I chuckled. I thought that sounds like every man's question who starts dating a woman with defined emotional center. They're like, <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> okay. This is from Robert K in Colorado Springs. Will I find a loving relationship? And is there a possible timeline? <laughs> Timelines are very hard to do because free will, right? I can tell you that there is somebody in your sphere, meaning energetically, there's somebody circling you. It doesn't mean it's literal and it doesn't mean it's tomorrow. What I also uh, am being told to ask you is, 
you will attract a version of your current self. Are you good with that? Okay. Because you will only apply, you will only pull towards you what you are. And okay. so I would offer you this piece of advice, take inventory, look at your traits, your characteristics, because that's what you'll be pulling in as a mate. And if there's anything that needs tweaking, um, look honestly, ask a friend. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Carol F from Hockley, Texas. Uh, how can I increase the length and quality of my sleep? I've had insomnia for 30 years. Uh, deep sleep is lacking. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the first thing I get. You're an old soul. And what that means is you've been around the block. <laughs> you've had many, 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 many lifetimes. And your soul is super busy when you're sleeping. So when we sleep, the human body is the only thing that needs replenishment. The soul is out having, you know, woohoo, let's go have a party. Let's go connect. Let's go meet. So first of all, you've got a lot of that going on. Physiologically, I would also ask you, if you were here in front of me, do you have a version of sleep apnea? Have you ever been diagnosed? Because I can see there's something you're not, um, I don't know what, I'm not a doctor, so my terms are very rough, but I don't know that you're breathing deeply enough. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was a message for me too. Mm. I, I need to go make an appointment for a sleep study. <laughs> don't sleep. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Here is a question from Kelly in uh, Veracruz, Mexico. I'm looking for guidance on whether to pursue a career as a paid speaker. I would also like to pursue a career as a stand-up comedian. However, this paid speaker uh, coaching program she's considering is very costly. Um, let me see. It's kind of like, what should I do? Should I pay for it or should I learn by trial and error? So the first, the first piece of guidance I got is why would you pay for something you're naturally gifted at? Anyone who wants to be a stand-up comedian already has the quick wit, already has the, you know, the, the comprehension of how to string things together, already has everything you need. And here, my dear sweet one, you're paying for that certificate, that piece of paper to give you confidence. That's all it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jessica in Brooklyn. I'm a 5-1 profile living in New York City. I have a rewarding career, a beautiful, happy, healthy child who turns 18 I'm still seeking, searching, longing, and wanting a lasting romantic relationship. I turned 50 this year. Um, my question is, when and how will I meet him? <laughs> is that kind of true love and partnership I'm seeking still in my future? How do I align with him in time and space? Mm -hmm. First of all, yes. Um, there is someone, again... I we all have a mate here and some of us have more than one mate, right? So there is somebody out there. I would refer you back to the question I answered for Rob or the comment I made for Robert because Spirit's saying, make sure you're, all your ducks are in a row. Make sure you're in alignment. You've worn a lot of titles and a lot of hats over the year. And so now you have to change hats and you have to put on desirable partner. And what okay. does that actually look like. And the other thing is make sure that you're being in the physical space of somebody, um, of an energy that you like doing. So in other words, if you like taking spiritual development classes, go to a yoga studio or be out, be present with people and get into the mix of what you're passionate about. That way, the alignment, when you, when you call him in, there will be commonality. Okay. Okay. Okay, here is a question from a woman in Portugal. I would like to know if the baby I'm carrying and which pregnancy is not going through as a message that I'm not listening to. Why did he choose me? 
for this short experience on earth. It's my eighth pregnancy. Uh, I'm full of love and gratitude for being a vehicle for all these souls, but I'm also super tired and confused. So the first thing I hear is these souls are doing it for you. In other words, every time you conceive a whole, I, I, I know this seems contrary, but they're showing me a hole gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Now, this could be if there's a chasm, if there's a split between your partner's family and you, or maybe there's something that's not quite rock solid. These souls are offering up repair. Hmm. Now, that's a, a horrible way to learn the lesson the human would say. But in reality, these souls are choosing to do this for you. And so I would look deeply into your life. What is it that needs repairing? Or what is it that these souls are helping to get more cohesive in your life? How's your relationship with your partner? Is there any, you know, I, that's the that's the easiest place to start to look. Okay. Wow. Um, okay. This is from Lori B. Um Valley Center, California, would like to ask if there are any specific health issues or concerns with me. So it's very hard to do health readings cold. Yeah. But the first thing I can see is I'm drawn to your upper stomach and your chest area. I don't know if you have some sort of breathing issue, asthma, bronchitis, emphysema, something in there. But I hear um, just a labored breathing in there. So I don't okay. know if it's recognized by you or not. Um, I've also okay. got to see things that were on the horizon. So I can't, it's very hard to do health readings in this environment. Okay. Okay. This is from Chandra Yu. Um, my question is, are my partner and I in this lifetime holding each other back energetically from being in service to others or fulfilling our purpose? Why do we feel like every time we are about to do something, it all is slowed down again? Mm -hmm. That's Celine. Energetically, there's a competition between the two of you. This comes from a past life where the two of you were siblings and you, you might think of it as sibling rivalry. Now, you might not feel it in this life. You might say, oh, we're complementary to each other and blah, blah, blah. Remember, it's the energy. And so there's something from a past life that hasn't been fully learned yet. And so you're having the struggles in this life. Now, I only ever do past life readings like that because they're relevant and pertinent and can help one in this life. I don't just necessarily do them for the amusement of it. Um, so, you know, that's something you could look into. Um, I don't regress people when I do past lives. I just simply see what I see and then we talk it out and then we pinpoint it to this life. So that's what I got there. And that's something that you can do that over Zoom? Oh, yeah. Is yeah. that something? Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is from Josephine in Sweden. Will I get a job teaching philosophy or should I set my goals for the PhD in social work? Um, yes. Philosophy is your passion and philosophy, really, when I feel your energy, philosophy lights you up. And I would say, pursue that dream with all that you have. Don't wait for it to come to you. Go find it. And you may have to take baby steps to getting that job, meaning you might start at a, at a lesser level than you'd like. Okay. Here is another question uh, from Josephine. What happened to my mother that made her the way she is today? Mm -hmm. I, I just see lots of trauma, lots of wounding, almost as if she was stifled growing up. I, I what, it's very I get images a lot, and I can see her head being held under water, not literally, but almost as if she was drowning, like not able to express herself. And as a result, I feel like she got bitter and angry. Okay. 
Here's a question from Seda. Um, she lives in Kent in the UK. Uh, I have turned my life upside down and used all of my resources to follow my purpose, but it feels like I am sailing against the wind. I seem to have a blind spot, which I cannot see that's creating resistance. What am I missing? What is my blind spot? Your blind spot hasn't been revealed yet. And when I tapped into your energy, I just saw um, like a dark curtain, N not an evil or nothing weird like that. Just like it's closed for me. Also, I can't see into it. Yeah. Um, I would ask you this. What is it that makes your heart expand? What is it that you're passionate about? Because I feel like the phrase they give me, because they also talk to me in phrases, you're riding a bike without a chain. It's like so, you're not going anywhere. You keep repeating the same thing, same thing, same thing. You need to tweak something a little different. And again, the veil doesn't allow me to see what it is. Um, this is introspective work. And this is meant for you to go into seclusion, into silence. And the energy of the hermit comes up. Go into um, um, seclusion, put yourself behind a closed door and let the answer come to you. Okay. Well, and I think of also, it's something that just popped in my head is that, um, you know, going to be doing an interview down the road with Ashley Nicole, who is a Gene Keys teacher. And we're going to talk about the core wound and how it fuels our life's work. And when I read that, I just think of fueling your your purpose, but from the place of your of of your wound, but that it really can turn into fueling mm -hmm. your purpose with your gift. It's just you just don't know how to get there yet. It's the wounded healer, the version of the wounded healer. Like we can heal people through our wounds because then it becomes what we teach, what we know, what we live. So yeah. yes, I, I love that. I, I love what human how human design dovetails so beautifully with what I do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Allison from Utah. Um, I need a full physical renewal to go with the energetic renewal needed to embrace my purpose. I have felt recently. I, oh, I have had a thyroidectomy, thyroid cancer, and multiple autoimmune disorders. What can I do to finally start feeling as good physically to match my big mission and purpose in this life? So first of all, you're rebuilding yourself. And when I talk about rebuilding, what they show me is a triangle, mind, body, spirit. So your body, you know, basically the thyroid is the center of voice, right? Um, you had had a voice repressed in one way or another for a very long time, whether this life or a la a last life. Um, so you're building. I would also then go on to ask you, what is it you're doing to cleanse and heal your mind? Because it's how you think is how you are. And so maybe some um, refreshing of the mind, limiting beliefs, that kind of thing. That's powerful, powerful work. Yeah. Okay. Here's a question. It's long. I'm going to try to condense it down. It's from Shanti in Montreal, uh, Quebec. I'm currently unemployed and enjoying the break, but I'm concerned about financial security. I've never had a clear sense of direction or passion, and I'm looking for guidance on what, what my next steps should be. And then she goes into, should it be travel? Should it be school should it be should i wait and do nothing it's just kind of very so shanti one of the things i can see very quickly about you you're like a whirlwind you don't have roots you're a wanderer you're a nomad and what i would tell you what they're showing me they're taking my attention right to your root chakra and so you basically the simplest thing you can do is consistently ground yourself Keep yourself grounded and do some root chakra work, which was is the center of family, the center of tribal connections. Uh, I feel like there's a, I see little feet and a running, running, running 
from something, not to something, but from something. There's an uneasiness about your energy that feels, if you tag on to something, if you lock on to something, it, it's an uncertainty that lives deep within you that got put in there early on in life. And so you're literally unable to commit. Okay. Do your chakra, do your root chakra work. Okay. Um, okay. This is from Rachel. She's a five one. She's my five one group. I know who she is. In February, 2018, I left my career of 14 years due to adrenal fatigue and burnout. Um, she was also burned at the stake too, mm. just very similar to me. Um, I've done a tremendous amount of deconditioning and spiritual work. Can you tell me what is on the horizon for me in terms of my career path? I have a lot of momentum in many different directions right now. Mm. So the phrase is, you can throw the baby out with the bathwater, get rid of what you've known it's time to step into the unknown. And that's all about creating a dream or a vision board for where your heart is leading you to go. Um, no more settling. There's no more settling for you. Yeah. The reason you you had the adrenal fatigue is because you settled. You you did the, the quote unquote, the human thing that you're supposed to do. Um, no more doing that. Okay. Yeah. She'll like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay, my name is Vasiliki. I live in Athens, Greece. My question is, I'm coming out after a long period of time of grief and want to share my findings in my language by starting a YouTube channel. As a 5-1, I'm going to be a heretic and it is scary at the same time. I have to work in a job that will provide my living, even though I don't want it. So my question is, is this a good time to follow my desire to share human design and my experience in the Greek community? Um, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm holding back out of fear that I'll be judged or that I don't feel competent, competent enough. I'm looking for ways to find my soul tribe. Mm -hmm. It's really all about self-worth, self-esteem. And here's the thing, keep doing what you're doing, meaning keep the nine to five job, because everything you've learned and are learning can be your YouTube channel. Stay transparent, stay vulnerable, and your following will automatically find you. Yeah. Well, and also as a 5-1 profile, uh, yeah, if you're using your experiences your own experiences to deliver a message to others, that's really powerful. And, you know, I, she's afraid she's going to get burned and judged and all of that stuff coming with the, the fifth line profile. But at some point you got to kind of do like what I'm doing and you just got to go for it. Right. I mean, and she may. Yeah. She may. And the lesson in that is you get back up and you keep going because as I taught in my class last night, everything's an illusion. There's no react, not every, everybody puts their own perspective, perspective and their own spin on everything. So you're never going to please everybody. And yeah. the only way that you will ever figure out what's next is to walk through the wounds. Yeah. I like that. Walk through the wounds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, that, those are the list of my questions that we wanted to try to fit with in an hour, right? Veronica, what kinds of things do you have coming up? Or is there anything that you want to talk about with some of your programs or things that you're doing or sure. anything you uh, want to share? I guess what I'm really known for is I do readings, obviously, but I also have a membership called Going Within. So I take the spiritually curious woman uh, I help her manage her anxiety, build her confidence, develop her intuition, and really uncover her soul purpose. There's a lot that goes on in these classes. They, uh, they're with me twice a week, uh, twice a month. You meet with me live. I have built a group, um, a library of videos and audios, and we have a Facebook group. Um, but that's my. I'm really proud of that. I'm also coming out with mediumship 
development classes where I'm going to be teaching um, the average, ordinary, everyday person an easy, simple, practical approach to mediumship. And mediumship is connecting with the other side, deceased loved ones, spirit guides, or angels. So yeah, okay. have a lot going on. Yeah, yeah, good. I'm so glad that you joined us today. This is so, so yeah. cool. Yes, I, um, love and I wish you all the success in the world. And I know that you'll be successful with this. Oh, like thank you. Thank you. Um, and people can find you at veronicadrake.com. I'll go ahead and put that in the comments. And then um, we had talked about you possibly extending people a um, a, pr a promo yes. code yep. for a reading or... Yep. Uh, Let me see. Um, I, I will tell it. I'll get back to you because my assistant was creating the code as we were speaking and I'll have okay. to what that is, but we'll put yeah. it there. So it'll give you 20% off a reading with me. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. And if they go to your website, they can see exactly what programs you offer and the costs and mm -hmm. All that and good also, stuff. I have two really cool things. I have a lot of cool things on there, but the number one thing is discover your own psychic strength in under 10 minutes. I walk you through a process, a guided process, um, and it's free, and you discover what your strongest Claire is. And then I have divine downloads, which was a, which is a weekly downloaded message that spirit gives to me. And I put out every Monday, uh, comes to your inbox. And so you can get a little divine wisdom. Nice. Yeah. Okay, great. Great, great, great. Thank you so much, Veronica. You are and so welcome. Thank you to all of our our sparkly heretics <laughs> watching today. Everybody have a great week and we will we'll talk to you soon, Veronica. Bye. Thank you.